Hello, my name is Dr. Ben Holken, and I'm a senior lecturer here in mechanical and mechatronic engineering at UTS. Today, I would like to show you an uh, experiment that's been set up with respect to vibration condition monitoring. I'm doing the first video clip, and I'm just going to now take the camera from my colleague here so that I can explain in some detail the experimental setup. Here you can see a bespoke rotating machinery setup with a motor, um, a brushless DC motor here which drives this shaft through a flexible coupling in here which you can see this shaft is driving another shaft alongside it through this gear ratio here which is a 2 to 1 gear ratio. As you can see on this bearing housing we have a piezo electric accelerometer mounted to this uh, bearing housing. There's a piece of retroreflective tape on this shaft here which you can see as I rotate the shaft comes around and that enables us to make a once per revolution tachometer measurement. Every time this tape passes by we have a, um, a signal comes back at effectively a square wave and we can use that to determine the RPM of the shaft. We also have in here a belt drive, a tooth belt driving another shaft over here that is um, connected into two bearing blocks here and there's a third bearing block in the middle which is essentially free floating to a degree it's mounted with these two screws top and bottom and this third screw here allows me to in introduce an axial load on this shaft so this puts the shaft into bending and also puts an axial load through this bearing that's located in this position here you can see I have another piece of uh, retroreflective tape that's rotating on this shaft and there's a tachometer, actually an in integrated tachometer here which as you can see as that tape passes through the red light comes on and goes off and then that de develops a square wave. Um, <clears throat> lastly on this shaft here I have an eddy current brake. So I've got a large rotor here, an aluminium rotor, again there's a piece of tape on there so I can determine the number of uh, revolutions per minute but as this rotates this eddy uh, this uh, magnet here can be provided with a uh, voltage via this cable and a voltage power supply over here which I can change the voltage on by using this potentiometer and that introduces a torque a braking torque onto this disc and we have a load cell here actually which is not presently connected but you can see that this load cell once I apply a torque here clearly uh, there will be a, 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 load, a load on here as a result of the fact that this is shot on a, on a, on a, on a, on a axis here um, and we can determine the amount of torque given the distance from the load cell to the effective um, radius of, of uh, acti activation of that force. Um, there's also an encoder mounted on the back of this shaft here. Again, this is not currently in use. Um, it would essentially give us, in addition to a once per revolution measurement, we would get a position for the shaft also from the encoder. You can see that there's a flexible coupling mounted in here. Um, and that's typical when we have something mounted and it's not necessarily aligned with the shaft. Um, lastly, I've got another accelerometer mounted over here, which is clearly measuring the um, acceleration through this uh, bearing here on this bearing block. Now this bearing has been deliberately damaged to be able to demonstrate the way that we can make vibration measurements of rotating systems to determine something about their nature and we've deliberately cut this bearing. This is one that's been removed so it's been cut more significantly than the one that's installed um, but actually on the, this is the type of damage that we've introduced. So if I can just get the camera to focus, you can hopefully see that this has got a, mar a mark in here where that bearing surface has been, has been scored. And as the rolling elements pass over this, then clearly they will introduce a cyclical amount of load. <clears throat> the instruments are powered, um, accelerometers are powered by these inline charge amplifiers here, which are provided with a constant current from the data acquisition system here. National Instruments Data Acquisition System. Uh, the tachometer is powered 
using this uh, DC power supply over here so tachometer signal comes again into the acquisition system on that channel and this cable goes to the tachometer. So we've got three channels into our data acquisition system over here and I can show these uh, and I'll do that in the next slide, next video, thank you. But before I do that I just want to show here that you can see the gear accelerometer sensitivity given in picocoulombs per G of 55.3 and the gear accelerometer charge amplifier gain is given as 1.05 millivolts per picocoulomb. So with these two pieces of information it's possible to determine the overall channel sensitivity for that gear accelerometer channel.